What about looking at, at a particular characteristics of both physical ideas and mathematical ideas, which is beauty? Do you think beauty leads us astray? Meaning, um, and and you offline showed me a uh, a really nice puzzle that illustrates this uh, this idea a little bit. Now uh, maybe you can speak to that or another example where uh, beauty makes it tempting for us to assume that the the law and the theory we found is actually one that perfectly describes reality. I think that beauty does not uh, lead us astray because I feel that beauty is a requirement for principles of physics. So beauty is uh, fundamental in the universe? I think beauty is fundamental. At least that's the way many of us view it. <laughs> it's not emergent. <laughs> it's not emergent. I think I think Hardy is the mathematician who said that there's no permanent place for ugly mathematics. <laughs> and so I think the same is true in physics, uh, that uh, if we find a principle which looks ugly, uh, we are not going to be, that's not the end stage. So therefore, beauty is going to lead us somewhere. Now, it doesn't mean beauty is enough. It doesn't mean if you just have beauty, if I just look at uh, something is beautiful, then I'm fine. No, that's not the case. Beauty is certainly a criteria that every good physical theory should pass. That's at least the view we have. Why do we have this view? That's a good question. It is a partly, uh, you could say, based on exper experience of science over centuries. Partly is a philosophical view of what, what, what reality is or should be. And uh, in principle, you know, it could have been ugly, and we might have had to deal with it, but we have gotten maybe uh, confident through examples after examples in the history of science to look for beauty. And our sense of beauty seems to incorporate a lot of things that are essential for us to solve some difficult problems like symmetry. We find symmetry beautiful and the breaking of symmetry beautiful. Somehow symmetry is a, is a fundamental part of how we conceive of beauty at all layers of reality, which is interesting. Like, uh, in, in both the visual space, like where, where we look at art, we look at each other as human beings, the way we look at creatures in the biological space, the way we look at chemistry, and then into the physics world as, as, as the work you do. It's, it's kind of interesting. It, it makes you wonder like, <laughs> which one is the chicken or the egg? Is symmetry the, ch the chicken and our conception of beauty the egg or the other way around? Or somehow the fact that everything, the symmetry is is part of reality. Is it, it somehow creates the brain that then is able to perceive it, or maybe that's this is just because we, maybe it's so obvious it's almost trivial that symmetry, of course, will be part of every kind of universe that's possible, uh, and then our any kind of organism that's able to observe that universe is going to appreciate uh, symmetry. Well, these are good questions. Uh, we don't have a deep understanding of why we get attracted to symmetry. Yeah. Why do laws of nature seem to have symmetries underlying them? And the reasoning or the examples of whether if there wasn't symmetry, we would have understood it or not. We could have said that, yeah, if there were you know things which didn't look that great, we could understand them. For example, we know that symmetries get broken and we have appreciated nature in the broken symmetry phase as well. The world we live in, has many things which do not look symmetric, but even those have underlying symmetry when you look at it more deeply. So we have gotten maybe spoiled perhaps by, by the appearance of symmetry all over the place and we look for it. And uh, I think this is, this is perhaps related to the sense of aesthetics that scientists have. And we don't usually talk about it among scientists. Uh, in fact, it's kind of a philosophical view of why do we look for simplicity or beauty or so forth. And uh, I think, in a sense, scientists are many, a lot like philosophers. Sometimes I think, especially modern science, seems to shun away, shuns philosophers and philosophical views. Mm -hmm. And I think at their peril. I think, I think in my view, science uh, owes a lot to philosophy. And in my view, many scientists, in fact, probably all good scientists are perhaps amateur philosophers. Mm -hmm. They may not state that they are philosophers or they, they may not like to be labeled philosophers, but in many ways, what they do is like what is philosophical takes of things. Looking for simplicity or symmetry is an example of that, in my opinion, or seeing patterns. You see, for example, another example of the symmetry is like how you come up with new ideas in science. You see, for example, an idea A is connected with an idea B. Okay, so you, you study this connection very deeply. And then you find the cousin of an idea A, let me call it A prime. And then you immediately look for B prime. If A is like B and if there's an A prime, then you look for B prime. Why? Well, it completes the picture. 
Why? Well, it's philosophically appealing to have more balance in terms of that. And then you look for B prime and lo and behold, you find this other phenomenon, which is a physical phenomenon, which you call B prime. So this kind of thinking motivates asking questions and looking for things. And it has guided scientists, I think, through many centuries. And I think it continues to do so today.